Hey gang, it's your old buddy Platt, and today I'm going to show you how to make beef jerky out of ground beef. So let's go! Well, a couple of weeks back I did a video on how to make beef jerky. Um, we're all kind of stuck in quarantine right now. Uh, unfortunately, my brew shop's not open. Uh, that and I like beef jerky. What uh, goes better with a cold beer than a good slab of beef jerky? Well, just as I feared, once I made my first batch, I was going to want to make more. And uh, that's what we're doing today. We're going to make some more beef jerky. But this time, we're going to use ground beef. Why ground beef over like flank steak or top round or what have you? Well, under these current conditions, uh, some things are just harder to get than others. Uh, if you go through your... Uh, you know, uh, meat section at uh, your local grocery store. It's pretty slim pickings, but one thing you can generally find is ground beef. Um, so it's easily available. Uh, also, to ground beef just tends to be a little cheaper than regular top round or flank steak. Uh, also, too, one of the things that people object to beef jerky or when people try beef jerky they don't like is sometimes it's tough. Well, that's due to uh, just the connective tissue and the muscle what have you. Well, with ground beef you kind of avoid that because again it's just been ground, those connective tissues have been have been torn or cut uh, where again in a regular top round or flake steak you don't have that. So those kind of come out to be tougher pieces of meat. So with that in mind, the little research I've done, I thought let's make beef jerky out of uh, ground beef. Now one thing on the ground beef real quick, you want it as lean as possible, at least 90% lean. We talked about this in the previous beef jerky video that it's the fat remember, the bird remembers me trimming the fat off the steak it's that fat where you can where you might get a uh, possible infection or the meat going bad because that fat does not properly dehydrate all the way through and again that's where bacteria can grow and we don't want that so you want as lean as possible as ground beef as possible. I'm using 91% lean, but if you want to go to like ground venison or ground bison, those are real lean meats too. Um, so with that being said, let's make some beef jerky with some ground beef, and we're going to start off with our marinade recipe. All right, so here's our marinade recipe, kind of a tweak of uh, what we did last time. Uh, we're going to start off with a teaspoon of black pepper, a teaspoon of garlic salt, a teaspoon of onion powder, a quarter cup of soy sauce, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, two tablespoons of brown sugar, we're adding sugar this time, and just to kick it up a notch, I'm going to use uh, Chipotle flavored Cholula to taste, so everybody's tastes a little individual. Uh, you may notice this time I did not use any regular salt. Uh, my last batch came out a little salty, so I thought this time I'd just cut back on the regular salt since I already have garlic salt and soy sauce, what have you. So this is our marinade, and this is for one pound. So uh, let's get to making our beef jerky. All right, so you see I've got regular hamburger patties. Uh, I, I bought these frozen. I just let them thaw overnight. And we're just going to throw them all in together. You can use regular, you know, ground beef too. But again, this is probably what's available in most people's stores. So this is what we're going to use. Um, I've got the marinade ready. Uh, one of the things you want to do is, because uh, I added the Cholula in there. That's kind of my special ingredient for this recipe. You want to be sure to taste it. Just make sure you get the heat right, especially something like Tabasco, Cholula, Sriracha, and kind of hot sauces. Um, individual taste vary, so um, you want to make sure to taste that before we go. I've tasted it. We're ready to go. Uh, make sure everything's clean. Wash my bowl, wash my hands. And we're just going to dump this over the meat. And we're going to just work this in with our hands. Uh, if you, you know, had gotten a gift, one of those big uh, attachments to your mixer, you know, where you make sausage or whatever, and it has the big turning auger or whatever, you could throw this in one of those bowls or whatever. But I just like getting into it myself, making sure everything is stirred in there, make sure we get it all 
mixed together. And once we get this all mixed together, we will cover this up and we will put this in our fridge. Now you can leave it for as little as two hours, but we are gonna leave it overnight because we want everything just to really marinate into that meat, get all this flavor, and it just makes our life simpler. So let me get finished mixing this up and then uh, we will come back tomorrow and make our jerky. Alrighty, so we've let our ground beef marinate overnight and now we're ready to uh, heat or dehydrate our beef. Uh, what I want to do is just take little pieces of, of uh, beef and just kind of mash them out into little thin patties. Uh, of course, be sure to wash your hands. But we want, we want to make these about a quarter to an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. Uh, this being hamburger, I would probably thin it out a little bit. And uh, we're just going to lay this out on our tray, kind of almost chip size pieces of uh, hamburger or ground beef, I should say. Uh, you can, I've seen people take where they just put the whole layer of beef here and just roll it out. And then cut it with a pizza cutter. You could do that. I just want to try to kind of make these in like a little nugget or a little size of a chip. While I'm doing that, um, need to heat the oven, preheat the oven to 300. I know that seems high, but I'll uh, when we put uh, these in, I'll describe why we're doing that. So let me get finished preparing um, the jerky to go in the oven, and we'll come back and throw her in the oven. All right, so we've got our jerky laid out on our racks. Like I said, we preheated the oven to 300 degrees. Uh, in our previous jerky video, I used 170 as a setting. The reason why I've turned it up to 300 is ground beef uh, needs to hit a higher internal temperature than other forms of beef than the uh, bottom round that we used last time. Um, just for safety purposes, we're going to let this set in the oven at 300 for the next 10 minutes and then after that we'll drop our temperature to 170 then and just let the process play out right. This is for food safety uh, purposes. If you ever had to take a food safety class, if you ever was a bartender, waiter, cook, or whatever, you know that ground beef uh, is one of those potentially hazardous foods. So just for safety purposes we're going to put this in the oven for 10 minutes and then we'll come back and reset our uh, oven. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes in the oven at 300 degrees. Uh, it should smell a little bit like burnt hamburgers cooking to a certain extent. You may or may not be able to tell on the camera, but we have a certain sweat on the meat. Again, similar to if you're grilling hamburgers at home. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just take a paper towel and you see we're just going to take some of that excess moisture off because remember we're dehydrating this and so we want to get as much of this the drippings or that sweat on off the top of the meat that's going to just help us dry this meat out faster while I'm doing this I've already dropped my temperature in my oven down to 170 and when I put this back in I'm going to leave the door cracked that's for a couple reasons a to go ahead and bring that internal temperature of that oven down from 100 to 170 as fast as possible and also two because again this meat sweating we want to let out some of that moisture again we're dehydrating this meat uh, if we're using a proper dehydrator we wouldn't have to uh, worry about that but since we're using the oven um, we uh, we're like so we're gonna leave it cracked so I'm gonna finish drying this off throw it back in the oven at 170 we're gonna leave the door cracked and in four hours our jerky should be done so we'll come back then all right so our beef jerky's ready uh, I let it go an extra about 45 minutes to an hour or so um, conditions vary uh, depending on your climate if it's you know humid outside or not four hours is just kind of a guideline on the time but you want to check it throughout um, Make sure that, you know, maybe one side is not more done than the other. 
what have you. So like I said, not a little short of five hours. I left it. Um, as far as as far as how long this is good for, uh, roughly a few days to a week. The same for the jerky we made last week. There's methods and ways to extend uh, out. I, I believe there's something called curing salt, what have you, um, that will extend the shelf life of this jerky. But I only did a pound, and after evapor evaporation, we're going to end up with just a little over half pound. So that should go pretty quickly. Um, you know, if you're making beef jerky, supposedly you like beef jerky. So uh, a half pound should go in a few days anyway. But you got about a few days to a week on how long this is good for. Um, so let's go ahead and try our jerky, see how it came out. Oh man, this is good. Um, I, I got a nice crisp exterior, but still soft in the middle. Um, this is not as salty as our uh, jerky last week. I said in the ingredients part, the, I didn't throw any additional salt. Um, between Worcestershire sauce and soy sauce and the garlic salt, we've got enough sodium in there. You know, sodium helps preserve the meat. So I didn't feel like throwing any more salt in there. It really kind of comes out. Um, here, I really do get more of the meat flavor. Um, I do get just a shade of sweetness from the uh, brown sugar. This is just, uh, and see, it, it could break apart so it's not too soft. But again, softness to the taste. We don't have the toughness of regular, uh, like I said, if we'd used flank steak or um, top or bottom round steak. The, the ground beef really uh, makes it a lot more tender. Overall, another successful batch of jerky. <laughs> Bless it. Um, don't worry, folks. Still brewing beer. I'm, I've got a wine kick coming up. We're still brewing a lot of stuff, but definitely, definitely, definitely going to keep making some beef jerky. Um, I found some recipes I actually make with beer and wine because you, you know that's how I roll. So, more to come on the topic. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or just you know beef jerky idea, please leave them in the comment section. Um, I hope you like this video, and if you did, please subscribe down below. Also, uh, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. Questions, comments, concerns. Please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.